In May 1995, 19-year-old Stephen Churchill of Wiltshire, England, a previously healthy young man, began exhibiting signs of dementia. His symptoms included poor memory, loss of motor functions, and the onset of severe depression. He transitioned from a healthy young man to a confused wheelchair-bound nursing home patient in a matter of weeks. Sadly, just six months after the appearance of his symptoms, he succumbed to the effects of aggressive neurological degeneration. Churchill was one of many victims of a new variant of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE, also known as mad cow disease. Mad cow disease causes the degeneration of neurons in the brains of cattle and more recently humans. In the mid-1990s, the UK experienced a significant outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalopathy. This triggered widespread hysteria, concerns about the meat industry, and a severe loss of trust in the UK government due to its inadequate and delayed response. What's most interesting about this outbreak is that it was not caused by a bacteria or a virus, but rather a specific type of protein called a prion. In this video, we'll see how this simple protein caused an international outbreak. Speaking of unprecedented, my writing has really improved since I started using Type AI. Type AI is a keyboard extension app that acts as a virtual writing assistant. It helped me write the script for this video, and it can help you write pretty much anything. If you're trying to change the tone of an email, reply to an awkward text, or send just the right message after that first date, Type AI can make it easier. Type AI is best used on your phone and is powered by the same technology as ChatGPT, so edits are quick and seamless. Instead of obsessing over whether a text sounds just right, Type AI will take what you have and create a message that better communicates what you're trying to say. If you want to be more impactful or sound more friendly or professional, Type AI lets you easily adjust the tone to better suit your communication style, making the interaction more tailored to your preferences in the context of your message. Click the link in the description box below for a free trial of Type AI Premium version. A prion is a protein. It's composed of the same amino acids that make up protein in eggs and meat. What makes prions different from other proteins is its folding structure. The way a protein folds dictates how it behaves and what it does. For example, to work as an enzyme, a protein folds into a shape that produces a pocket, where a molecule can fit in and be catalyzed. Due to a very rare genetic mutation called creutzfeldt jakob disease, proteins misfold at higher rates than usual. When a protein is misfolded and can't unfold, it's called a prion. If a prion encounters another protein, it will disrupt its structure and misfold it, converting it into a prion. This newly made prion goes on to convert other proteins into prions, resulting in a self-replicating cycle. Misfolded proteins tend to aggregate into groups called amyloid plaques, which can appear anywhere in the body such as the skin, joints, heart, kidneys, and liver. The buildup of amyloid plaques causes swelling and inflammation. Swelling and inflammation are generally not life-threatening, unless it occurs in the brain. If amyloid plaques accumulate in the brain, they cluster around neurons and cause inflammation. As you can see in this microscopic image of neurons covered with amyloid plaques, the areas in red are amyloid plaques which tend to be very sticky and accumulate onto neuronal cells. These plaques then induce inflammation directly on the neurons and brain tissue. This damages brain tissue, producing holes in the brain itself, creating a sponge-like appearance, owing to the name of spongiform encephalopathy. This inflammatory tissue damage disrupts neuronal signaling, resulting in deficiencies in cognition, memory, and motor functions. Due to the neurological damage, prion infections in the brain are 100% fatal and cannot be treated. As soon as symptoms manifest, damage is extensive, and mortality occurs in less than a year. Fortunately, creutzfeldt jakob disease is very, very rare. Though it's genetic, it can be transmitted by person to person, but only by eating the tissue of the infected person. Yes, you heard that right. Human prions are only transferred through cannibalism. This is a good reason why it's looked down upon to eat people. This is also how mad cow disease was initially spread. Cows that were predisposed to prions were slaughtered. Some of the infected meat was added to cow feed, known as MGM, or meat and bone meal. MGM cow feed was given to cattle and was a common practice in the industry at the time. Cows fed with contaminated feed ingested cattle meat containing prions, leading to infection. Subsequently, infected cows were processed for meat and some was added to cow feed once again. This cyclic process perpetuated the spread of prions. Eventually, tainted meat reached supermarkets, 
where fatal spongiform encephalopathy was spread to consumers. If you're wondering why prions were not destroyed by cooking or stomach acids, it's because the prion protein structure is remarkably stable. When prion proteins fold, they move sheets of amino acids together in a stacked arrangement, so there is maximum hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds are notoriously strong and renders prions impervious to conventional cooking temperatures, gastric acids, and even protease enzymes. No matter how the beef was cooked or sterilized, it could not be made safe for consumption. To effectively address outbreaks of mad cow disease, infected cattle must be promptly isolated and safely disposed of. Cattle in close proximity to the affected areas must undergo thorough testing for infection. Failure to enforce these crucial measures led to the most significant food contamination outbreak in UK history, ultimately culminating in the notorious mad cow disease outbreak. The origins of the outbreak can be traced to a cattle farm in Sussex, England in December 1984. Cattle began showing symptoms suggestive of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. Post-mortem examinations conclusively diagnosed the animals with BSE. It was discovered that the cows had been consuming feed containing meat and bone meal, or MBM, derived from cattle affected by BSE. Unfortunately, very minimal precautions were implemented to curtail the spread of BSE within the cattle population or investigate implications for human consumption. In 1989, as cases of BSE infections continued to escalate among cattle, the UK government took decisive action by prohibiting the sale of cattle organ meats, including brain and spinal cord. However, they continued the sale of general cattle meat to the public. Simultaneously, the U.S. imposed bans on imports of live cattle, sheep, bison, and goats from nations where BSE had been identified. Agriculture Minister John Gummer assured the public of the safety of beef consumption. On May 16, 1990, Gummer delivered a now infamous broadcast aimed at demonstrating the safety of beef consumption by having his four-year-old daughter, Cordelia, take a bite from a hamburger. When Gummer offered her a bite, she refused on national television perhaps serving as an ominous indication of the events to come. During the peak of the outbreak between 1992 and 1993, more than 180,000 cattle tested positive for BSE, marking the peak number of infections. Despite this surge, the UK government maintained its position, offering reassurances to the public that humans were no more than dead-end hosts. On May 21, 1995, 19-year-old Stephen Churchill became the first victim of this new disease subsequently labeled variant creutzfeldt jakob disease, or VCJD. Despite mounting concerns, the UK government persisted in asserting the safety of British beef and maintained that there was insufficient evidence to establish a definitive link between BSC and the new variant found in Churchill. A second case of variant creutzfeldt jakob disease affected a 25-year-old male named Peter Hall and would sadly meet the same fate as Churchill. Not long after, Stephen Doral, the Secretary of State for Health, disclosed a pivotal finding. Variant creutzfeldt jakob disease was linked to the consumption of cattle meat, contaminated with prions responsible for bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Public outrage rose to anger, compelling the UK to take decisive action by banning the use of MBM feed for livestock. Testing and tracking for cattle soon followed. This triggered a dramatic decline in beef consumption across the UK. Europe, the US, and Canada imposed a ban on all imports of UK meat. The UK government itself implemented a sweeping prohibition on all beef sales for a period of 30 months. In March 1996, a robust campaign was initiated to confront the escalating threat of BSE among cattle. The campaign called for over 4.5 million cattle to be systematically slaughtered to isolate the transmission of BSE. In 1999, following quarantine measures and extensive testing, the incidence of BSE finally began to decline. With levels reaching a manageable point, the UK government lifted the ban on all meat products. The toll on the UK cattle industry was staggering, amounting to a colossal $2.4 billion in losses. Tragically, 178 lives were lost to variant creutzfeldt jakob disease as a result of consuming contaminated beef. The low infection rates among humans were attributed to several key factors. These included intense public pressure and media scrutiny of the UK government's reluctance to investigate transmission to humans. The public's confidence in the government was severely affected. While the government did not intentionally deceive the public, its strategy of offering reassurances proved to be a misstep. 
Moreover, scientific advisory committees were criticized for their slow decisions. The UK mad cow disease outbreak became a classic lesson in epidemiology, underscoring the perils of failing to discern clear disease patterns and hesitating to conduct investigations. It showed how failing to take simple precautions resulted in widespread catastrophe.